What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my dividend portfolio and many of you guys have been asking why I have certain allocations the way they are. So we're going to be doing a construction video of this dividend portfolio. I'm going to be showing you guys why I have these certain allocations and what goes on with my thought process when choosing which stock gets a lot of allocation versus which stock doesn't as well as why I chose these certain stocks to be inside of my dividend portfolio. So if you guys want to get a little bit of a heads up on your own portfolio, maybe this video will be able to help you guys. So if you guys want to see all of that or if you guys just want to know a little bit more about my portfolio, stay tuned and you guys already know, cue that intro. Before we start doing a breakdown of my portfolio, I think it's important to introduce myself. So right now, this is my dividend portfolio. For many of you guys that have been following my channel, you guys have know that I'm looking to build a portfolio where I can live off of my dividends. And that's my entire goal. This probably won't happen for a little while for me unless I start making a lot more income. But for now, we're doing about $115 every single week into this portfolio. So we started off with about $500 less than a year ago. And to this date, we are sitting at almost $6,000. So we've been growing our portfolio quite a bit because of the weekly additions and also because of capital appreciation. So if you guys want to stay tuned, stick around for this journey, definitely hit the subscribe button to see more. And also you guys, you already know, I love having this journey with you guys as well. So comment down below your portfolios as well. So let's take a look at my allocations by sector. I like doing it by sector just because certain sectors, they have more growth ahead of them and some sectors have more dividends that they provide than some of the other sectors. You guys can break down your portfolio however you'd like, but in my opinion, I think it's easier by sectors, but you don't necessarily have to do that. So with my portfolio, I have tech as the highest sector allocation, then it's consumer, my ETFs, healthcare, real estate, industrials, financial, telecom, and utilities. So this is the way I like to break it down. And you guys can see the actual allocation right over here. So it's 22% of my portfolio is to tech. 17% to consumer and so on. So you guys can see tech is the biggest sector that I have by allocation and then utilities is the lowest. Now let's get into the juicy stuff. So in my opinion, the biggest thing that you want to look at when building your portfolio is what are your goals and also what is your time horizon? So my goal is to live off of my dividends in hopefully 25 to 30 years. So right there, that's my goal and my time horizon is 25 to 30 years. So typically when you have a longer time horizon, you want to start building positions and stocks that will be able to have a lot of capital appreciation and also high dividend growth rate. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what's most important to me. And that's what makes more sense to me. So that's why I have tech as the biggest because typically tech stocks are the ones that have higher growth rates as well as higher dividend growth rates. And we'll take a look at some of my holdings just to kind of show you guys as well. But that's what works best for me. And that's what exactly my portfolio needs in order to be able to reach my goal. So let's take a look at some of the holdings inside of my tech sector over here. So first off, we've got Microsoft, VGT and Apple. So these are the ones that I had the highest allocation to because once again, I'm looking for a high growth rate. So I'm looking for that capital appreciation. I'm also looking for very stable stocks. that I know that will be there for a very long time. I'm sure Apple will be here for years to come. Microsoft as well. And then I have VGT, which is basically an ETF of tech sector stocks. I believe in this tech sector in the long term. They have the highest ability to grow, in my opinion. I'm a huge tech guy, so I definitely believe in that in the long term. My goal is to build as much capital appreciation with the VGT and then eventually sell it off and reallocate those funds to dividends that pay out a little bit more. For example, something like Coca Cola. And then I have some few smaller holdings over here, like Texas Instruments and Cisco. These are just kind of like compliments because they pay a little bit higher of a dividend and they also have a decent growth rate as well, especially Texas Instruments. So that's one thing that I really like about Texas Instruments. So the way I kind of construct my portfolio is I have my main core over here of these three and Visa as well. Then I have smaller stocks where I can kind of allocate a little bit to get a little bit more of a dividend. So I'm getting very high ability in that capital appreciation and just a little bit of, you know, something on the side with Texas Instruments and Cisco. So what I would like to look at is 
dividend growth rate. So with dividend growth rate being a huge factor in my portfolio, let me kind of show you guys where I go to get this information. So I go to Seeking Alpha, you can see there's apples, I look at the dividend scorecard, and this is the most important thing to me, the five year growth rate. I'm looking for a stock that has huge capital appreciation and that growth rate. I keep mentioning it because this is my formula and this is exactly what's been working out for me. If you're at a shorter term time horizon, this probably won't be the best for you, but for me, this is what I'm going with. And there's tons of benefits for looking for that high dividend growth rate. The first thing that's most important to me is I'm avoiding paying high taxes right now. So you can see right now Apple's, Apple's current dividend is 0.62%, which is very, very low. My goal is to be able to live off of my dividends in the future and not right now. So the thing is you get taxed on your dividends after a certain amount. And again, guys, I'm not a tax expert. I'm not a financial advisor. So take all of this merely as entertainment purposes only. If you learn something from this, then great. But this is not financial advice. Anyways, back to the video. We're paying very low dividends compared to putting something in a stock like AT&T where they have a 6-7% dividend yield and then having to pay taxes. Again, I'm looking to be able to retire off the future and I don't really need the dividends right now. What I do with my dividends right now is I just reinvest it. So that's why I really look for this higher dividend growth rate right now. So 9% to me is pretty good. Personally, I love when stocks have over 10% five-year growth rate. That's huge and I love that. For example, let's take a look at Microsoft very close again to that 10%. I do have a few stocks where they have a very, very low dividend yield, but they have a very high growth rate. And I'll leave a link in the description if you guys wanna check out my full portfolio. But again, guys, man, I just love stocks that have high dividend growth rates. And we'll pull up my dividend allocation sheet so you guys can kind of see which stocks I have the most in. We've got Apple, Microsoft, and then I kind of want to show you guys the vice versa where I have stocks that pay good dividends right now, but their growth rate isn't that high. So let's pull that up. All right, so let's take a look at the differences. So we've got Microsoft over here, very low dividend yield, low payout ratio. So there's definitely room for growth here and then a high dividend growth rate. But when we compare it to 3M, a very great 3.35% dividend yield, but their five-year growth rate isn't as high. Their payout ratio is pretty high as well. There's not as much room for growth. Yes, it's very consistent, which is great. I love adding these consistent dividend stocks in my portfolio. So the way I like to look at it is I have my core holdings that I'm looking for growth, and then I have my supplemental, supplemental ones. Sorry, I cannot speak. Those are the ones that I like to add on the side, like 3M. CVS is another one. This is one that I've been debating for quite a while because they haven't grown their dividend in a while. They have a very low five-year growth rate and they have a decent dividend yield and a very low payout ratio, which they can grow it over time eventually, but we'll have to see. Again, we'll go back to my dividend allocation sheet and you guys can kind of see what I look at. So my higher stocks are typically long-term dividend growth. You can see that all over here. And my smaller ones have are here for income. So what income means is they're basically just my supplemental companies or stocks. For example, you guys can see that we have 3M as an income, CBS, Cisco. I do have tons of long-term dividend growth because this is what I'm looking for in the future. Again, I'm trying to retire in a longer time, in 25 to 30 years. So it doesn't really make sense to have a bunch of income stocks. I do have a few that you know, will work out for me right now. For example, this is a great ETF to have. I love having ETFs because it gives me a sense of being able to kind of cover for any potential losses or just to kind of keep up with the market. So that's why I do have a good amount of ETFs inside of my portfolio. But either way, this is how I construct my portfolio. So again, guys, I'll leave a link in the description or you guys can just pause the video and take a look at some of my holdings and how I construct my portfolio. My portfolio isn't perfect, as many of you guys know, but you know what? Hopefully you'll be able to pay off in the future. We'll just have to see. One illustration chart that I love to show because it just kind of gives you a nice visualization of how your portfolio can really work for you is on Track Your Dividends website over here. I'll leave a link in the video or wherever on the top over here description if you guys want to check out how this platform works. But anyways, I love to show this because you can see this is my current five-year dividend growth rate at 8%. This is a mix of all the stocks that I have. My current dividend yield just below 2%. 
my starting annual income, which is current to this day, 116. So anyways, I filtered it to 25 years and I changed and play around with some of the customizable things on the bottom. So I kept this the same, the dividend growth rate, which I have now. And I'll be honest, this won't stay a person forever. I'm sure as these companies and stocks make more and more money, they're not going to grow as much as they are right now. I mean, yes, Apple, and Microsoft are still going to grow, but probably not at the same rate that they have. And then I put the price appreciation at 8%. I put my annual and contributions at about 6,000 because I'm doing 115 per week. So that makes it almost $6,000. So I just did 115 times 52, 52 weeks. So that's why I've got that over here. And then this is what I get. My ending value in my portfolio is going to be $1,115,000, which is insane. And then the thing that I'm really looking at is Look at that, $115,000. That's awesome, an annual income. This is exactly what I need. And to be honest, like I mentioned before, of course this is gonna go down, but at the same time, I'm gonna be looking to sell out of my ETFs, for example, VGT, VUG, and some of the other ones, and put them into higher dividend stocks. For example, you know, if AT&T is still a good stock pick 20 years from now, or Coca-Cola, who really knows at this point, but at the same time, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So this is the breakdown of my portfolio. It doesn't mean yours has to be the same as well, but for me, I have a longer time horizon, and this is the breakdown of my portfolio. Before we end this video, I think that M1 Finance does a really good job of showing how your breakdowns of your earned dividends. So this is a brand new feature that they just put out. I mean, it's really cool. You can see I've got the most coming from consumers. And then of course, the least coming from utilities because it's probably the smallest sector in my entire portfolio. But either way, I thought it was really cool. I just wanted to kind of throw that in. If you guys didn't really know about that new update from M1 Finance. But anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys learned anything from this video. Again, it'd mean a lot to me if you guys hit the like button and subscribe. Stick around for the journey. Hopefully, we'll be able to reach financial freedom together. I don't want to do this alone. I think it's more fun if we do this all together and keep each other motivated and hold each other accountable. So, guys, let me know. We got to start a community. It would be fun. But anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I appreciate it once again. And guys, remember, everybody eats.